Hi guys, this is Tim from OCTV and I'm here with Peter for the OC Show Season 2. So welcome to the new show and um, welcome to 2015 because we haven't actually talked since last year. Yeah, that's true. So this is Season 2 and for those who don't really know yet, Tim has persuaded me to do extra episodes of the OC Show this year. We used to do it for the Overclocker once every two months, I think. Every issue there was a new OC show. And Tim wants to do one every two weeks almost now. So, yeah. well, there's a lot of, there's, there's actually a lot to talk about. that. We, that's what we noticed in the previous OC shows. Um, usually we spend about 35 to 50 minutes talking about everything that happened in the past two months, which is too much. You know, we need a shorter format. That's and true, yeah. That's exactly what we're going to do in, in season two. Well, especially last year, there was 97 competitions that they start about so I mean if you want to try to deal with all of them and try to at least mention each of them then yeah we need to make more shows so we can keep it short so to keep it short let's start uh, straight from where we stopped last time and we were if you remember at the AOC in Moscow in Russia the cyber stadium and after that we came back uh, very shortly to Taipei to leave again uh, for two events so the first one was the GLC the Galax OC carnival in uh, Wuhan in China and uh, we had also another event after that uh, in Indonesia this time with uh, the AOCT from Jayat Review. So I've been to the Galaxy event, uh, to the Galaxy event, sorry. Um, so that event was uh, quite interesting. It was in the middle of China, so not so accessible actually, but uh, it kind of um, gathered overclockers that were all in the, the top. So pretty much the usual faces. Uh, it was a nice competition, an uh, interesting cash prize, uh, mainly an event focused on, on gaming though, a lot of audience, but mainly for the gaming part. I think it was pretty cold as well, right? Very cold as well, yes. At this time of the year, Wuhan is kind of in the middle of the winter season, and yeah, the, the stadium where they, we had the, the competition was not, not really heated, so it was quite cold, but well, good. Quite Less a humidity. Quite a, quite a contrast with, um, with the AOCT event in yeah. Indonesia, actually. We flew out to, I think it's the middle of the Java Island in a, in a city called Yogyakarta, but it was about 20 to 25 degrees, mm -hmm. so I could whip out my flip-flops and shorts <laughs> instead of your, uh, your, your winter jackets. And the AOCT was a pretty interesting competition. It's a, it's a competition organized by the guys from Jagged Review, mm -hmm. and it's focused only on amateur overclockers. They, oh, right, they even yes. impose a ban list where they say, Very you know, famous band list yeah, <laughs> if, you, if you've ever competed in a global open competition, mm -hmm. you're not allowed. If you ever won a local open competition, you're not allowed in. So but, no elite guys, no extreme guys, yeah. uh, only plain amateurs pretty much. Plain amateurs. And the cool thing is that by banning so many of the top overclockers, you have a lot of people that are not quite familiar with overclocking but mm. are interested in it who join in so in the in the event the, throughout the entire event it was like a five yep. day event there's over a hundred overclockers wow. who attended who participated in the various overclocking competitions and they came by themselves right no one flew them over oh yeah and they looked for their own accommodation as well so we we were there and we wanted to be there last year as well so it's only the yeah. first time that we attended and i think every day we learned a new lesson on on how overclocker uh, overclocking can actually be inspiring and interesting yeah. for plain amateurs it, yeah. it was a very interesting competition for what, sure what i liked the most about that event was for example the the, the tag team or the one versus one as, um, like a competition format they had there so they had a one versus one which was uh, overclockers trying to just beat them uh, against each other in a kind of a bracket system and then they had also the tag team which was similar setups so two systems and then it was two teams of uh, for example three overclockers on each side but each had 10 minutes to tweak the system and then had to pass the kind of like a relay race to mm. the next the next a, guy a, a funny anecdote is that on the very first day there was a there was a tag team setup and they asked to compete against oh, yeah. me <laughs> so the idea was essentially i had about 10 15 minutes to get a, a, a score up in i think it was three mark 11 performance the the physics sub test right and I could continuously improve, and there was five uh, five overclockers lined up who could then um, use a, a, a system with similar hardware across me to to beat my score. And the first person to beat my score would win a prize. Mm -hmm. Now on the first day, they didn't they didn't manage to to beat my scores. I continuously improved, run after run after run. You have the advantage of not having a like a reset or. Someone yeah, exactly. I, I could settings, con right? continuously build no. upon my previous settings. On the second day, it was a similar similar concept. So I was again invited on stage, and there was a different team of five other right. overclockers. But this time, they learn, you know. Mm -hmm. And 
they basically they they agreed in within their team you know what the first person you'll tune the cpu and then the second person you'll figure out what the max uh, the maximum uh, memory frequencies and then the the third person you look for the timings and then the fourth person you look for the gpu clocks yeah so after four people they got my score all right so, so then the, they were able to run the benchmark on the idn pretty much like to beat the yeah the they, they they beat my score the last guy won but it's very interesting that when in this team there was a there was a dynamic and together yeah. they were a lot stronger than everyone individually yeah pretty it, interesting concept yeah, it was it was very nice and at the end they run the same thing um uh, not with you, but with other overclockers that were attending. So those were not only amateurs, it was also open to the regular guys. And uh, they had like massive crowd behind them cheering for each team. So that was pretty, pretty awesome. Um, so that was for 2014. Then we just came back to Taipei and had a look at the fireworks and all that stuff. And uh, 2015 started straight at, after that, and um, it was a CES time as usual. And uh, this year, uh, HyperX had also, uh, like last year, the finals of their uh, HyperX over OC takeover uh, in Vegas. Yeah, that was a CES, Las Vegas as usual. A very special city and a very special setting for the HyperX <laughs> OC takeover. There's not that much I, I'm allowed to disclose, <laughs> but the, the yeah, well, exactly. The competition you can, right? But, yeah. <laughs> No problems with the competition. So again, there was uh, there was three benchmark stages. The first one was uh, max, uh, maximum um, uh, memory clock right. using DDR4 memory, the HyperX Predator kit. The second stage was Cinebench, and then the the, uh, the third stage was XTU at five gigahertz. So there was ten overclockers flown in from around the world who qualified through the through their online qualifiers mm -hmm. at HWBOT, and then they they competed on this in this competition for a maximum prize of. Seven thousand US dollar for the winner. All right. Yeah. So, just like last year, Extreme Addict won seven thousand <laughs> US dollars in the pocket. Very well done. Yeah. Uh, second place went to Splay from USA, right. uh, five thousand dollars in the pocket, and then third place was Uncle Fester from Australia. Oh, very uh, with, nice. With three thousand US dollar. Yeah, very nice indeed. So a very uh, tight competition in terms of scores, or how how did that work out? I think in the the first uh, the first stage in the memory clock, Uncle Fester came very close to breaking the highest frequency ever for DDR4. He didn't quite get there, and then during the CES convention, better scores were put up consistently. Oh yeah. Um, the CPUs overall were were quite good as well. I saw Extreme Addict; he had a very good CPU at like five point. 5.6 gigahertz mm -hmm. in, in, in Cinebench and then in XTU we saw guys running above 5 gigahertz on core as well. Okay. So uh, in terms of in terms of the score quality, very good. Yeah. yeah. So you mentioned uh, that some of the guys stayed during CES uh, after before the competition to bench, right? They had Gigabyte had some OC event on their booth where they're pretty much uh, showing off the, the X99 board. Yeah, they the had the new champion yeah, board. The, the new champion board. Um, there was also the Bench House, which was um, an event, pretty, well, it was an all-week event where overclockers that were attending CS could uh, either just stay there to sleep, uh, sleep over as a, as, a, as a hotel, pretty much, and they could also bench there. So how did that work out? Did you guys have LN2 there or how did... I think the guys arranged about 600 liters of LN2 and um, in the house they had, they had a, I think, three, or, uh, yeah, three stations where they could bench. Um, it was primarily the, the, the US guys yeah. who kind of grouped together in this house. And uh, yeah, they stayed there and put up some nice scores. You can check them out on HWPod. All right, cool. And uh, what did you? What else did you see at CES that um, I don't know sparked your interest? Or there was an inter lounge in Broadway, but that was not so much of a big deal for us. It's um, um, it's primarily the mobile chips, and yeah. a lot of CES was focused on uh, home automation and smart cars. Essentially, I okay. think for for overclockers, Computex will be a lot more interesting. In fact. For reasons I cannot disclose just yet, um, okay. I think Computex will be a lot of fun for the overclockers. All right, so Computex guys, keep it in mind. Um, meanwhile, while you were having your fun at CES, I stayed stuck here in Taipei, and uh, well, I worked on something else. I worked on the LAN ETS event, so that's the first stop of the HIBOT World Tour. And uh, so it's going to be uh, the World Tour to introduce to you uh, to the concept. There's a series of events uh, around the world, there's going to be uh, three of them already scheduled for 2015. We might have add more. So, and um, so for each of those events, we're gonna have one gathering, uh, one competition for the elite uh, extreme guys and everyone that uh, does it into. 
And uh, there's another competition for amateurs as well. So that pretty much covers the whole ranges of uh, leagues at HW, but there's something for a little everyone. Yeah. So that uh, LAN ETS event, uh, what's so special about it? It's awesome. That's very, that's fun. Yeah, well, it's awesome one. Uh, so as you mentioned before, we have a couple of parts in, in, in the World Tour events. Yeah. So I think for amateur overclockers, the most interesting part is that we'll, we organize a, a small workshop where we introduce amateurs to mm -hmm. what is overclocking, how you can be uh, participating in these competitive overclocking events and tie a, a, a small competition to that as well. Right. Um, at the LAN ETS, the competition format is um, you can qualify through a certain league and then we have an elimination with the best, uh, the, the people who set the best scores during the league. Okay. And then on the other hand, we have um, our plain regular extreme overclocking gathering where we bring, him, uh, bring in a bunch of LN2, just like we did last year at the Computex. Right. Uh, it's like a bench party pretty much. Right? Yeah, exactly. And then you can just bench anything you want, essentially. Yeah. So for the LAN ETS event, uh, we are quite proud actually to have partnered up with the guys from overclock.net. So uh, they will be um, helping us out with the event. They are also uh, going to be um, hopefully there. We're not sure actually who is going to uh, come in the, in the top staff of overclock.net. We haven't confirmation yet, but it's going to be pretty cool to work with them. Uh, OCTV will be there as well for streaming if you can't attend the event. But uh, yeah, really, there's some guys already discussing about uh, doing car sharing from around New York area or even Toronto, which is not that far. So yeah, check out the threads on overclock.net and the one on uh, HTI below as well to, to find out about the, the event, right? Yeah, and join us. All right. So there's going to be more of those events, but I think we're going to keep that for the next episode. So we keep it short. Okay. <laughs> um, so next episode, we're going to talk about uh, World Tour stops in Europe. So that's going to be the, the gathering for all the European guys. Uh, it's going to be a huge one on the LAN party with more than 2,000 gamers. It's going to be something quite, quite extreme. Um, we're going to talk also about the OC Esports public launch because we had been in a... In a, in a beta period with the community for the last three months so now it's officially launching with a, a new patch of correcting quite a few more bugs and there's also going to be the launch of the challenger series um, the first season of it first season exactly all right, all right so that's going to be interesting in two weeks um one more thing uh, we're going to have a um, live stream uh on monday actually so this episode is going to come out by Friday, Saturday. So if you watch this over the weekend, tune in on uh, Sunday evening uh, US time, 9 p.m. Eastern time. Or if you're in Taipei, that's gonna be 9 a.m. And sadly for the guys in Europe, that would be somewhere around 3 a.m. Um, yeah, sorry. So during that Twitch, uh, that Twitch stream, pretty much what we are going to do, we are going to replay this episode and we're also going to be uh, sitting here in front of the camera uh, to answer questions and uh, rumble mumble about um, everything else that we want to talk about or see, always or see. So stay there, till there, stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like the video, share it if you like it. And thanks for watching. <laughs>